All right, guys, today in the shop behind me, I have a, it's a big dump truck. This is a uh, Chevy Silverado 3500 HD. It's got dual wheels on the back. And you probably came to this video because you're stressed out about doing the job and you're not sure how to do it. So I just want to say that you can do this job, even somebody with very little mechanical ability, um, as long as you're able to follow instructions. Uh, today we're not going to cover uh, doing the brakes on it. I will do that in a separate video. This video is just on how to get those wheels off, get the rotor off, and replace the rotor. One thing you want to make certain of that I want to point out, and some other videos did not, is I'll show you. You want to make sure you have enough room here to work. All right, if you're pulling it in close quarters, you may have a problem because once we take these wheels off, there is an axle that's gonna have to pull out to about here. So give yourself at least, at least three feet uh, at a minimum of working room. Otherwise you're gonna have all these wheels off and you're gonna have to put the whole thing back together to move it and you won't be able to complete the job. Now that that's out of the way, I wanna mention that this is going to be a lengthy video and I apologize if you're just looking for something so you'll have to scrub the video, but I wanna take this step by step and make sure that you clearly understand uh, what I'm, what, what's happening and how to do this. All right, so let's get started. First things first, you wanna jack this up. I'll show you. I have the jack right there on the rear at the bottom of the differential there. Okay, and this is a very heavy truck. So you wanna have also a jack stand. As you can see, I have going up there as a second support system. All right, now if you have just a regular two ton jack, uh, it's gonna be very tight, uh, very hard to, to jack this up. I would recommend something at least three or four tons, uh, but you can get it up with a two ton. It's just gonna get really hard and you're gonna get very little space, as you can see, under the tire, which is really all you need, but make sure you have that support in place. All right, so. <clears throat> We want to remove this cap. Um, I had a 7 8 It felt a little loose, but it works. You don't really need to back these out all the way. You can just put this on there, and you're really just going to loosen them. I don't think they'll back out all the way anyway. Go around, loosen them all, and you're just going to pull it off just like that. And just flip it upside down because you're going to take these lug nuts off here, and you're just going to toss them in there. To take these uh, lug nuts off, you're going to use a 7 8 socket. Now, the rim is pretty deep, so you may be using an extension with your socket, and you're finding that it's not loosening up the lug nuts. So you may have to remove your extension and try to get your gun in there with just the socket on there, and you'll find that it will take them off. So I'm gonna go ahead, I already used, I already uh, loosened these, I'm gonna take the lug nuts off, and we're gonna remove the rim. that was loose we didn't have to pry them apart and I want to point out is now's a good time to take pictures and if you're if you're doing this for the first time to remember how the wheels go back on you can see how this rim comes out here now our outer rim goes in so you want to make sure that you put them back on in the right order they came off Take a crowbar, we're gonna stick it behind the wheel, try to pry. It's coming now. There it is. There's our rotor. Now, before we get into anything else, you wanna uh, take this caliper off and bolt that you want to take off there's gonna be a uh, this one right at the top here and then if we come down to the bottom all the way down here you're gonna see the other one on the very bottom I don't know how well you can see that but it's right there it's not the one above it it's the one at the very bottom and over here it's not that one it's the one at the very top the socket here is a 13 16 so you don't have a whole lot of room in here so you're not going to be able to uh, use any adapters or swivels or anything like that. And this top bolt is going to be very, very tight. 
all right? So pushing on it is probably not going to work. And I've even already sprayed it with uh, some PB Blaster and I still can't break it. So what you're gonna have to do is get a uh, sledgehammer or something here and you're gonna have to tap down with that to try to try to break that loose. It's still not going. I don't want to cut out the struggle either. I need you to see this. We got it. If you don't have a sledgehammer and you need to get that off, another thing you can do is get yourself a pipe with a hole in it, slide it over your uh, ratchet there, and probably have to lay on the ground because standing under this truck is not gonna be an option. You're just gonna end up hitting your head or you got no room. You're gonna have to lay down and push up with all your might. Uh, that should crack it loose for you if you don't have a hammer. All right, the bottom one now, it actually gives you some room, so I'm going to go ahead and use my air gun and I can take that right off. Both bolts are out. The caliper is now ready to be removed. Um, this is very, very heavy caliper, so you want to use two hands, which I'm going to have to set the camera down, and you don't want this to drop at all because you'll break this, this hose back here or crack it, and then you'll have all kinds of problems. You want to take this, if you can, set it up here on the leaf spring for now out of the way, but I would get zip ties and wrap it around or some bungee cords, because if that falls on you later on, it's gonna hurt and also break other stuff. So you're gonna use two hands, kind of wiggle this back and forth um, until it comes off and try to set it up here. Uh, if it's not coming off, get yourself a pry bar, stick it down in there and just pry and wiggle it. This will come off of here, but I'm gonna need two hands to do that. Yep, she's a little stuck on there. There it goes. Now, I'm okay with prying against the rotor because I'm replacing the rotor anyway. If you weren't, you're just doing the pads, you gotta be very careful you don't scratch that rotor up. Now, you wanna get ready for this thing to drop when you're prying this. Ah, still stuck. set it up there out of the way but this could fall you want to uh you know secure this somehow and this is going to be a whole other video where we do the brakes right now we're going to continue to get this rotor off and the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to remove these eight bolts right here before you take them off you're going to want to get yourself a little pan a little oil pan you stick it right under there because you are going to have some fluid that's going to leak out of here once we take these bolts off and separate this all right I'm gonna use my air gun for this and this is a 19 millimeter socket all right with our bolts removed um, this may or may not be loose there is a gasket between here um, depending on what the prior mechanic a person used they may have used a, a gasket sealer um, which would make this a little bit tighter to come off now if it doesn't come off what you can do is take a uh, rubber mallet and we're just going to tap around the sides of it all the way around just to loosen it up and now you should be able to take a little screwdriver and just get it right in the edge there kind of work it in there there it goes and pry and see the fluid coming out all right that's why you want your pan and this is like i said in the beginning of the video this you're gonna have to pull all the way out here and that's why you needed the room now when you pull this out it's gonna be a whole shaft going up there that's gonna be soaked in fluid so you might want to get a rag in one hand uh, so you can actually wipe that off as you're pulling this out pull it out with this hand put a rag here and just slide it along the rag it 
out. You can see how long it is. Ah, there's your, uh, your actual shaft there. You can see it's got the splines on one end, so you don't want to drop that and damage them. All right, so set that somewhere safe. All right, now that is where the gasket would have went on the axle, and you can see they did use a uh, silicone in there, and that's going to have to be grinded off. You have to get all that off when you put this back on and either put some uh, gasket maker on there or go to the dealer um, and try to get the actual gasket that fits that. Now, if you look in there, see that little clip? I just used my screwdriver to pop that off. It's that little clip. And you don't want to lose this and don't bend it up taking it off. Um, get something real, real fine to get under there and pry this up and pull it off. Because what that clip actually does is there's a keyway in there and it actually holds that keyway in place there. All right. That's the clip right there. All right. Now you want to get a rag and you want to wipe all this out of here. Get all that fluid out of here and you'll see why in a second. All right. You see your uh, keyway right there? Now, Sometimes that's going to be very difficult to get out, and I'll show you uh, how to get that out. But we're going to try, if you get a little uh, magnet, uh, it's going to be really small because you don't have a lot of room here to get in. You might be able to grab it with the magnet and slide it out. If it doesn't, that means that this here is too tight and it's pushing against it. So you may have to back this off. And the way to do that is you get a punch and put it in one of these grooves and you want to beat down on this to turn this counterclockwise just the hair if it's pushing pressure on the keyway that way <clears throat> and then try to pull that out again whichever way this is putting the pressure on the keyway you want to uh, back the pressure off so you just put it in one of these grooves on here tap it down it looks like it looks like it will come straight out it doesn't look like there's too much pressure and maybe a little pressure pushing it that way all right, I got a little tiny magnet here. I'm just gonna stick that in there, and yep, there it is. That's your little keyway right there. Do not lose this keyway. Put it somewhere safe. Take it to the bank, put it in a lockbox, something, but don't lose it. All right, next, we wanna try to count the threads that are showing here. Um, so when we put this whole assembly back on, we, and we tighten this back up. We have an idea of how many threads were showing when we took it off, and we know that we put it back on right. All right, so I use a pick, but you probably could use a small screwdriver. And just stick it all the way in there, in the back. And we'll start with the first thread in the back. One, two, three, four, five. I think we got six. Damn it. It is going to slip on you. One. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there were six there and seven actually, it fell off. So now what you want to do is uh, remember that six, you can write it up here on the hub. But if you're going to clean this and grind this, you, you might lose it. So just write it anywhere on the frame or wherever, a piece of paper. Just don't forget how many threads. We need to unthread this. So you're going to get a punch. Put it in one of these grooves like we did before and you're going to hit on it with a hammer just to try to crack this loose so we can start uh taking that out of there all right so i got this regular flathead here it's kind of small and uh got my rubber mallet i'm going to stick it in one of those grooves i'm just going to tap it down until i can get this to start That may not be enough. I may need to have to get a uh, solid sledge and a uh, actual punch, but I just wanted to show you the problems that you might run into. I got myself a solid steel sledge now, and I got two different uh, punches here, steel punches. Uh, they do sell a tool that actually takes these off, but who the hell carries that? All right, so let's try it with this setup here. Yep, there it goes. Just gotta give it the steel. All right, so now, now that it's loose, we can just put this in there. And you can see, now, 
we can turn it by hand and back this little sucker out of there. All right. Come on. You're making my uh, DIY mechanics very mad by taking forever. There we go. All right, now, you want to remember how this goes back in. See all the little, uh, see all this side? That's all the little divots in it. All the little grooves. Well, if you flip over that side, it doesn't have those. But this side, it does. It has those little U-shaped indentations there. So that's the side you want facing out. Um, but take a picture with your phone, take video. So now you're ready to pull this off, okay? And let me move my light. You're gonna pull and you're gonna feel it giving resistance, okay? Um, and that resistance is pretty much, there's a seal back here. Um, being that we're replacing the rotor, and I don't care about damaging it, um, we're gonna take our pry bar, stick it right back here, and we're gonna pry. Now, I never encourage anybody to get under a heavy truck and start banging with a rubber mallet or you know or a hammer or whatever like i see in a lot of videos sometimes i mean you kind of have to do that but um let's take the surf the safe route first all right so i got a, a big pry bar here and you want to be careful because on the back of this there is a dust shield you don't want to beat that up too much and you don't want to bend that because that will rub your rotor when you put the new rotor on all right so we're just going to take a metal bar here Put it on the side that doesn't have the uh, the black dust pad because that's where the caliper was. And we're just gonna. Uh, actually, I saw it move. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it's it's loose. It's loose. All right, so now it's loose. This is very very heavy. Okay. Um, don't put your crotch under this and pry that way because if you pull this off and it falls on you, let's just say you're not having babies. Um, but one guy can pull it off, poor girl. Uh, it's just very heavy, be careful. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off now. There she comes. heavy. Alright, you can see the uh, rotor there. It's off, it's on the ground, and here's what it's going to look like. Okay, and this is your uh, emergency brake. Uh, this is not going to be covered in this tutorial. Again, we're just taking off the rotor, and we're going to put a new rotor on. Yeah, I will do a separate video on uh, actually, we're not doing the emergency brake at all, but I will do a separate video on the pads. Now, looking inside the uh, hub here, you can see your bearing. Okay, and these typically should be okay. I mean, these things are just drowning in fluid all the time. Um, but this is when you would want to check it, okay? And just make sure that it's spinning freely. Um, it's not locking up every so often. Make sure that everything is there. And that looks good. All right. This here, again, is where your gasket's going to go, and there's still some remnants from the old one on here, so this is all going to be cleaned in a little while. Um, but we got to get these uh, studs out of here. Now, some of these rotors... Uh, or you could actually put a uh, socket on here and thread them out. These, unfortunately, are pressed in. So the way that we're going to get them out is... Ugh. It's hard with one hand, sorry guys. Um, I'm actually going to get my uh, steel hammer and I'm going to hit on these and punch them out. Alright, so <clears throat> um, if you're not going to buy new studs, you may want to take a rag and kind of double it up on your stud here as you're hitting it. Um, you really don't want to mess these threads up on here. Um, a rubber mallet is just not going to get these out. You do have to use some force on this. I'm not sure if we're actually replacing the studs on this, so I'm going to use a rag because I'm assuming that we are probably going to uh, reuse these studs unless they're damaged. All right, but what you want to do is I'm going to take a rag 
And I'm just gonna set it on there. And be careful you don't slip and hit your finger. And that's out. <clears throat> Lift it up, I'll show you. There's your stud right there. All right, and we're gonna set them aside for now. I gotta go ahead and do all eight of these, so I'll be right back. All eight studs are out. Um, and I wanted to mention, be very careful when you are hitting that with the hammer. Uh, like I said, have a, a rag, but double or triple it up, and it's still gonna tear up the rag. But be very careful you're not hitting this area as you're going around with that hammer. So if you can't hit straight, get somebody else to do it. Um, you definitely don't want to score this up or you're going to have some leaks. All right, but they're all off now. This should separate without... Uh, there we go. All right, and you can move your hub. And there's the rotor. It's off. And now with your hub, you can look inside now. So... If you're changing this because you had a leak, this is the seal you're looking for right here. And this is really easy to change. And ours doesn't look like it needs to be changed, actually. It looks okay. But this is where, let me see if I can get some light on. There you go. This is where you would want to inspect it a little bit and make sure it's not cracked or ripped, whatever. But if you do need to change it, you just get a uh, screwdriver. It's real simple, and you're going to get it under the edge here. And you're just going to pry up and that seal will pull out and then when you're putting your new one in make sure you uh put some uh grease around it first to lube it up or some oil or uh, other brake fluid just some type of lubricant and make sure you set it on there straight and get a flat piece of wood or something and hit it down in there straight to press it back in and that's all it really is to taking that out putting that in now we're going to go on to prepping everything to put the new rotor back on if you feel confident enough in the job and putting it back together at this point, uh, before you go, all I ask is that you please uh, hit subscribe below, give me a like. Uh, I'm still trying to get my subscribers up, and um, hopefully this helped you out. All right, if you are going to continue watching, we're going to go on to cleaning and prepping everything, and let's get this rotor back on. All right, first things first, get yourself some brake clean. We're going to uh, spray all this down, this whole area. You want to get this nice and clean. I need debris on here. We're going to take a little scotch brake pad. Let me go get that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of lube on here. Just get a nice coat on it. So that when we slide that uh, rotor back on, that seal... And that bearing would uh, slide on here real nice. We have it nice and clean now. All right, got some lube on there. Now I'm just going to work that around. You don't need to glop it up on there. Just make sure it's got a nice coat. All right. Just like that. All right, so this area, we are ready to go. Let's get our hub ready. I'm just going to spray this down. Before you go ahead and start scrubbing all this, uh, you might want to take a rag and put it all inside of here, okay? You don't want any of these chunks or any of this debris or any metal falling down into here, into your bearings, okay? So we're going to get a rag, we're going to close that up, and then we're going to start cleaning up. You can use a bristle brush such as this and uh, go around all the holes here and try to get all that uh, old gasket maker off and clean it up. I actually have a air... Uh, tool with the uh, bristles on it so I'm gonna go ahead and get that I just feel like it does a better job you can see we got it nice and clean now all right so what you want to do is just kind of pull this straight up all right and any debris will stay on there all right now what we want to do is we want to flip this over And we're going to do the same thing with this side. We're just going to clean clean all these up and stick a rag in there. 
all these surfaces here are clean and the reason you're cleaning these is this is where it actually seats up against your rotor and your studs come through here so you just want to make sure that these are all nice and clean and any debris or burrs or anything are out of them so that this sits flush because otherwise you'll have a leak if you do not get this to uh, go flush against your rotor this is ready we can set this aside and now if you remember the axle the long axle that we took out earlier um, it had a lot of, let me put my light on here, had a lot of uh, the old gasket on there, that silicone. So we're going to go ahead and take the, uh, the uh, wire brush and we're going to get all that off nice and flat because we're going to put our own fresh gasket maker on there. Alright, you can see that wire brush did a really nice job. So now, uh, this is ready to go. Now we can move on to putting the rotor back onto the hub. So we're gonna pick this rotor up, and you see the eight holes in here? Well, you guessed it. We're gonna lift that up, and we're gonna line up those eight holes on here. Okay, we have the, uh, the rotor up here. And just a good rule of thumb, because from here out, you're gonna be handling this a lot. I try not to touch the face of this too much, because at this point, your hands are covered in, in grease. Um, you know, but, you are going to end up touching it and getting grease on it, but we will clean that later. But just uh, try to not play with it as much, especially if you have like a wedding band or anything on that's metal that might scrape it up. All right, now we're going to take our studs and we're going to set them all in here. So we'll drop them down in there like that for now. Now, if you look at these studs, they are tapered, okay? It has this, this shoulder right here, all right? But... It starts off thin here and then this shoulder gets a little bit thicker and goes up and this is where it's going to press into that rim all right now being that we don't have a nut on this side some trucks do um, and you know for a socket um, so what we're basically going to have to do is when we have these sitting in here in our rotor now we're going to get a punch and you have to be very careful you do not hit this rotor all right, but we're going to get a punch and our hammer and we're just going to tap them in ever so slightly so that they stay in place because after we do that we are going to need to flip this over and i'll show you what you need to do in order to drive them down in there so i got my uh steel hammer here and my punch and i'm just tapping on each one real slightly just to push them in just enough Okay, so now I can't even pull these out. Um, they're just tapped in a little bit, but now we're going to flip this over. And be very careful what you set the face of this rotor down on. I'm gonna use the plastic that the rotor came in um, because the workbench has a lot of dust and stuff on it. So you're gonna wanna get some washers but make sure the center of the washer is a lot wider than this. Don't get one that just fits over because as you push, as we pull these through, remember this stud is going to get wider and what will happen is that washer will get stuck on here. So get a washer that has a wider opening. It's much bigger than the stud and that'll fit perfect. Even when it, uh, the big part comes through there, it's still not going to get stuck on there because there's a lot of room to go here. But the purpose of this is, if, uh, if you remember at the bottom of this stud, there was that bare shoulder. And we're going to put a lug nut on here and tighten it. And when we tighten it, it's going to pull this up. And what happens is if we don't put the washers on and we tighten it all the way down and it pulls it up, that uh, lug nut's eventually going to hit that shoulder spot. And it's not going to be able to go any farther or it's going to ruin the threads. So you want to put these washers on here. Because this will cover up that shoulder part when it does get to that point. Okay, you can see I got a nice amount there. Now, I'm going to use a lug nut, put it on here, use my air tool to drive that up. But you don't want to use the same lug nut for all of these because you're going to put too much stress on that lug nut and probably destroy it. So, change lug nuts also. Do this one with one lug nut, set it aside, get a separate lug nut, do this one and so forth for all the other ones. We got our lug nut and we're going to set it on there screw it down by hand until we reach the washers all right now we're going back to our 7 8 with the air gun and 
we are going to hold this down. You might want to hold your ears here or lower the volume. And it's going to pull that up. You can see where it's slowing down and it finally comes to a stop. You want to check it and see if you're fully seated on the other side. Back it off now. And we'll take a peek on the other side. You can see how that one's higher than the others now. So it pulled it through. And you can see my washers come off with no problem. Now if these were smaller holes, these would be stuck down here and I wouldn't be able to get them off. Alright, so let's look in here. And it's that one right there. And then I don't know if you can see, those are all still sticking up. But that one is flush. Alright, so that's how you do it. And you're going to go around and do that for every single one of them. But remember, change the lug nut. All of our studs are through. And what you want to do is you just want to look around at all of them and make sure that you know none of them are higher than the others and you can see by this shoulder all right you really want to make sure that you have they're not all unlevel that can cause big problems with your wheel all right but we can go ahead now and uh we can throw this back on being that you had this face down before we throw it on just flip it up and uh we're going to spray this a little bit and we're going to get off any dirt and grime and grease and give it a wipe because this will be at the back where your dust cover is and you won't be able to get to it after. You have back problems. Could be a little difficult for you. Might want to get a second person, but just hold it up there. Do not drop it. Okay. We're halfway on there. Let's try to get this centered. Push it all the way up, and uh, that's it. Now, it might give you a little struggle to get past that back seal, but um, that's it. It's on. Make sure it spins nice, free. All right. If you wanted to, because you're gonna have fingerprints all over this, you can get your brake clean and spray all this down and wipe all that and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, start threading this back in and putting our keyway and everything back in here now if you remember we had counted the threads earlier and uh, I had six showing and we're gonna put this back on here and remember it's the uh, side with these little these little U indentations in it that's the side that will be facing you so we're gonna go ahead and set that on there and Jiggle it around so you can get it to go in easy. You definitely don't want to cross thread this. Um, try to get it in there straight. There we go. You can do a lot of it with your finger, but at some point, you're probably going to have to get a screwdriver to keep turning that. All right, I'm up to the screwdriver point. So let's spin that around. Get it threading in there. And right when you feel it start to get tight... All right, right about there, it's starting to get tight. All right, so now I want to count my threads and see how much tighter I got to go with it. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six, it slid off. I think last time it was seven where it slid off. So we need to go in one more thread. All right, so what we want to do to get to that extra thread is get yourself a punch and you're going to put it into one of the grooves and I need both hands for this, but I'm going to take my hammer and hit on this and turn this sideways to uh, tighten it a little bit more to get that extra th thread. sevens off all right so I got my seven threads and I tapped it a little bit to get that keyway lined up so now we can go ahead and you should be able to slide that keyway right in there if it's not sliding straight in you may not be lined up you might have to either turn it this way or that way to get that perfectly lined up for that keyway to go in there there's our keyway and you can see it just slid right in there 
All right, now if you remember that locking clip we took off before, you're gonna wanna put that back on now because that pretty much holds that keyway in there. So we're gonna set that up there. Hard to do it one hand here. And we're gonna get it started on there with my hand and then I'm going to push it up with this punch so that it goes all the way up against there and it will fall down into that last thread. And this pop. There we go. All right, now that's gonna hold that in place. All right, so now we can put this uh, gasket on. I actually called Napa and they had it. It was part number 5530. It's a uh, rear axle flange gasket. And that's basically going to go right there. Let's get our axle first, and we're actually gonna slide the axle in and put the flange over top of it to line it up. Axle here, we're gonna slide this, uh, you can see it, this flange over it, all the way up to the top. So now, it's really gently, we're gonna feed this axle in. And don't force it, just go nice and slow. You can see we got our flange down here. We'll line that up after, but as soon as it hits, right there, now just turn it slightly to line up those splines, see? And it will slowly start dropping in. All right, now it's in. Now we can line up that little flange there. Take one of our bolts here and kind of get it lined up through that through that flange now. All right, we've got the top one and I would suggest doing the bottom one just to center it out. It doesn't have to be the bottom, could be another one, but all right there. Now everything should be pretty center. All right, and let's go ahead and try to line that up now. And make sure that you're not, uh, you know, ripping the gasket either. Make sure that it is going into the, the holes there. Nice and straight. You don't want to cross thread it. All right. All right, so now you can go ahead and start putting all your other bolts in. And then we'll, then we'll tighten them up. All of our bolts are in. And you'll probably try to turn this now. And you'll notice that it won't turn. Well, don't panic. That's only because your axle is now in. And it's in the... Uh, engage with the rear so it's not going to turn because trucks in park and that is how you remove a rotor and put a rotor on a c3500 hd silverado and uh the brakes i'm going to try to cover in another video i apologize if i don't get to it i'm pressed for time but uh hopefully this helped and if it did please hit subscribe below give me a like i'll see you next time